This match you're against a shadow friend to mid, right? Mm, I don't think so. No? I think they sent the shadow fiend safe lane, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's odd. Alright, well from the start, who did you think was in the middle? I thought it was Shadow Fiend. Yeah, so in that case you might have wanted to grab a salve immediately. Yeah, the smoke that I actually mis misclicked, the smoke in my quick buy is actually supposed to be a salve. <laughs> okay. Yeah, against Shadow Friends, the first thing you must have is the salve because of the races. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so a win Ranger. Okay, let's watch for a bit. See uh -huh. what's up. <laughs> that was a bit of a delayed reaction from the Wind Ranger. Yeah. Other than that, looking good. Did you notice that she has just planted the ward? Uh, no, I didn't. It was very obvious. If you can watch her movements again. Like going back for no reason. Uh -huh. Making yeah. a sharp pause. Yeah. And then returning. Yeah, usually it's pretty easy to spot a warding action. Oh, the learning looks good so far. Except for this part. Yeah, I think I fucked up a bit. I missed about three yeah. leaps. Yeah, but it's fine, it happens. And that's not what we came to talk here about. Yep. Just some regular misplays happens to me as well. So, so this wind ranger, she's kind of playing pretty passively. What time my range is this? Uh, around two point five. Two point five. Okay. Well, for the future, against competent wind rangers, you might not want to trade as aggressively because they will activate wind run more than zero times, and even with that passivity. The wind ranger is showing you're getting quite a lot of damage taken to yourself. Oh wow, she she's clueless. Uh, this MMR range, you find many people playing mid, totally clueless. Okay, so uh, let me, let me summarize my talking points. Uh, Usually, the game plan against a Wind Ranger is to not trade that much, just focus on the last hits, focus on the creeps, clear the wave, stack jungle. But in this case, if you notice the enemy playing like differently, slipping up, or maybe just being clueless, in that case, you should definitely try to push for the advantage and try to go extra aggressive uh -huh. than you normally would. Because as we, as, as we have seen f uh, these first two minutes, she's really, she really doesn't like to use her wind run offensively or defensively. So, in the cases where the enemy mid laner is kind of open for harassment, like this wind ranger is, you should absolutely play more aggressively. Just like you're doing right now, so that's good. Uh -huh. Basically, the main point is if you notice uh, an advantage, you can push for it. Uh -huh. Which I'm sure you have realized yourself that she's playing kind of passively and you can deal more damage to her than she does to you. Yes. Now, let's talk about stacking camps for a bit. Uh -huh. So, you know it's 3.45 on, on the clock uh -huh. and you know you will want the rune and to stack the camp. You've got 176 mana, which during those 15 seconds will regenerate into 
about 210, which will mm-hmm. translate to roughly three remnants. That's three remnants you can use to clear the wave really fast. You have a lot of HP. You have fairy mm-hmm. fire. It is unlikely she can she can kill you during during this fast wave clear. So, in the situations where we can actually do this uh, wave clear without too many, mm-hmm. too many risks, you should absolutely go for it. Because right now you've left the wave in the middle. She's free to deny whatever, to last it whatever. But you, if you have pushed your advantage here, if you have cleared the wave with the three remnants, she would have no other choice but to sit under tower and she wouldn't be able to contest the rune. I don't think I will get to the stag if I if I contest the wave here. It's already forty seven, so if I you know contest the wave it'll be, you know, fifty two, three already within the wave. Yeah, exactly. So uh if you go in the middle right now and clear the creeps, mm-hmm. it would take you like let's say two remnant casts to clear it completely. So that's about five, six seconds. So by the time the group wave is done, it'll be the rune spawn time and the wind ranger she will have to choose. Either she goes for the rune, takes the rune from you, mm-hmm. but misses most of the last hits under the tower, or she gives you the rune. Either way, it's bad for her and good for you. Okay, so I gave uh, the stack more priority over uh, over the rune, or over a confirmed rune. No, no, the, the stack it doesn't matter here. I mean, if mm-hmm. if you can make it back in time, sure. But since right now you have said that you wouldn't make it back in time, we forget about the stack. We focus on clearing this wave, okay. so that by the time the rune spawns, Min Ranger has to choose: either mm-hmm. chase you or get those last hits under the tower. Okay. These situations will happen often, and you you must uh, consciously think about when you want to depush the lane. Because right now what happened is you have missed all the creeps and she still got the rune. Mm-hmm. So this situation has played very bad for you, but in hindsight you could have turned it around. Makes sense. Uh, my bad. I, I said you missed all the creeps. I mean I meant she got all her creeps. You didn't miss yeah. the creeps. But still it's it could have been better. Better. Yeah. Even so this little slip up didn't impact the laning much. You still got a stack that's still farming. You're still currently out farming her. So the lanes can be considered one lane. Now, what in your mind is your game plan for the next like five minutes? Just farm, farm, farm. And I keep an eye on the side lanes too. I try to farm, get the runes, and keep an eye on the side lanes. If there's a dive only, then I go for the kill before my orchid. Otherwise, I just try to get my orchid. Okay, so I, I, I can see you keep the spells balanced. Two points remnant, two points overload, so you can do quite some jungling and quite some aggressiveness, yeah? Yes, because I realize sometimes, you know, at this MMR especially, opportunity presents itself, and in that case, if I don't have, you know, enough overload, or you know the third third skill, then I you know miss the kill or something. I don't want to miss it. Yeah, that's that's a very good point for whoever will be watching this replay. If you aren't sure what you'll be doing in the game, just keep it mixed. It'll always work out in the end. Like against because I, I had a few games where you know basically I, I skipped my second point and then you know I missed two kills because of it on the mid laner, which would have been much better than farming a couple of more games. So yeah, I can imagine. So, as I said, you'll be focused on getting your orchids, but for quite some time, for a few minutes already, you're sitting on like 600 gold, which could have went towards the Sobi masks, or whatever it's called, that gives you mana region, cheap mana region. Yeah, that is something I fixed in uh, some of my recent games, so this is like my... Uh, I think I've played like 10 or 12 games after this, and I fixed it now. I. I start buying Sobi masks as soon as as uh, I have the gold for them. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, just a good uh, habit overall to buy the components as soon as you have the gold. The stats, the region, they all help. Now, while I was talking about it, the stats, there have been some things happening on screen. 
Would you like to guess what happened and what opportunities have you missed? Uh, the only thing I noticed is when Ranger TP did the TD and I you know, said it out loud on, on the mic that she's TPing, I did not notice anything else. You said it, she's teleporting. So right now, you know that the mid laner is not going to be in this lane for... Wait, what, she's back? What the hell? I think she went there, was unsuccessful, and then she came back. That was super fast. But but again, you know, I just want to ask a question here. If my mid laner is missing and I want to focus on my farm, uh, I'm not sure if you were going to say I should pressure the tower, but you know, are those two or three, four hits on the tower worth it? Or should I just farm a camp in the meanwhile? And sometimes I feel like, okay, uh, what would I get out of, you know, four or five hits on the tower? Well, that's, just... that's what I wanted to talk about, but she <laughs> she came back to the to the mid lane in like 10 seconds. Anyway, if, <laughs> if the mid laner is missing for a prolonged amount of time, like she's properly ganking or something, uh, then yeah. Your, your goal should be, ideally, to walk somewhere over here, either mm -hmm. kill the creep wave right there and then, or mm -hmm. track it upstairs and merge it with the small camp. Not only will this... Create some kind of a pressure, so somebody has to come back. Exactly, not only will you, will you create pressure, uh, someone will have to chase you, but also, the creeps that will come, they will suicide at the tower, they will deal tower damage because they will not be busy hitting the other creeps. So li like you said, uh, no, your your own 3-4 hits to the tower aren't worth it, but when it's 4 creeps hitting on, on the naked tower, then it's absolutely worth it. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's not that necessary. If you have like a triple stack, you can farm the triple stack, but it's, it's one, one more small thing on the efficiency scale you can mm -hmm. add to your habits. Whoa, what was that? Why did you go to base? I don't know. I felt like if I show up in the mid lane and she can probably kill me. I think it was probably a mistake. I don't do this now. I think these. I've learned this time is important time and my orchid timing. I should just go to the jungle farm some more gaps. Okay, you answered your own question because yeah, yeah. you have six seventy percent mana. That's two three camps missed. Huge waste of resources. Oh, one more thing. Uh, only the sages' masks can be bought two instead of one, but the robe of the magi is too expensive to buy two. So, mm -hmm. always try to complete one bigger component for the orchid instead okay. of buying many small ones. Mm -hmm. One more thing. When you're, I mean, when you know where you're going like to the base, like right now. You do have a lot of free time to look at the map, but you only glanced at the bottom lane very briefly, mm -hmm. and you could have checked out way more than you did. Okay. You could have checked on the mid lane, you should have seen uh, Wind Ranger status with the items. The top lane, see how your PA is doing. Also, one more question, or maybe, you know, a suggestion or something. Go ahead. Uh, Sometimes, you know, I buy to robe of the Magi's when I feel like, okay, I can kill. But if I, you know, totally plan to farm, I cannot kill anyone, then I go the Sobi masks. Yeah, usually you'll want two masks if you're primarily focused on farming and one robe of the Magi if you are if you have kill potential on the mid laner. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of kill potential, say it's someone like a Zeus or a Sniper, in that case, you can even complete the threats. Makes sense. Uh... Wow, well, very nice. Yeah, I oh. noticed she wasted the wind run, so it worked out for me. Yeah, I was about to say, as you're teleporting to the mid lane, uh, you, you will have the battle region, you will have the boost at the fountain region, you should always if the mid laner is within reach, you can always just zip in, yeah, do a few hits, and, and zip out. You will, you will have like seventy percent mana remaining, 
and the oh. mid laner will 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 be a little bit damaged, might retreat, might not. But in this case, what you did, I mean, she was completely off guard. She didn't have her wind run. So that's a mistake on her part. You saw the opportunity and you took it. The only complaint I might have is that your zips at the end. She cannot escape. There is no oh. need. There is no need to to do larger zips than in the place. Okay. Yeah, you can just right click her to death. These two zips to go. Oh, makes sense. Unnecessarily large, large distances. Okay. Other than that, it's very good. You, you spotted the opportunity, you took it. So in the end, this little trip to the base was unexpectedly worth it. Worth it, yeah. Now, in these moments, we actually, for whatever reason, have an upper hand on the mid laner. Mm -hmm. We should con continue pursuing this advantage and, and make sure the enemy mid laner is afraid to show on the lane. Okay. This will only cost you a fraction of your farm, but for the enemy mid laner, if he is not able to show on the lane and be safe, that's that's a lot of space lost for her. And just a little bit lost for you. Okay. So what should have happened, ideally, you're level 9, she's level 7, you show up in the lane, you you don't commit, you hit her a few times. Eventually she will have to use wind run or she will have to run away. If she uses wind run, you wait it out, you champ her, you kill her. If she runs away, mission accomplished anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean what you're doing is, is still correct, you're still wave clearing at your farm. But uh, once once you go high, you will need to just spot those little moments of advantages you can take. Uh -huh. But honestly, as a as a default laning wave clearing aggression, this looks very good so far. Uh -huh. And you even steal her camps. That's nice. So the, the item progression is kind of painful to look at. Yeah, I, I but, did this mistake a few But times, you did, but you did no. fix it, so it's cool. Yep. I don't know, mm. should I have gone on her or no? You should have absolutely... Yeah, I was thinking about it. Ideally, once you see her use the wind run, you walk towards her, and as soon as the wind run is about to expire, you jump. And that's a nice clean kill. So that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, this inventory is a bit of a mess. Circlet on, quarter staff off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty bad. So this was a game a while ago, as I said, and that's since then I've realized that uh, uh, like the little item efficiency matters a lot. Like two soapy masks, if you're just going to farm, is much better than this crap that that I have, and then one full item is better because oh. these little efficiencies actually do help you get, you know maybe 30 seconds or a minute faster to your orchid Absolutely. Which can and one more thing right now you have uh, illusion ruins which are oh. kind of useless on storm but on the early game they are very good for one thing do you know what it is stacking stacking yes yeah there's a micro aspect to that and i'm not very good at micro so maybe my, 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 adv my advice do you know command groups yes you can, what I do usually is I have Storm, uh, not Storm, my main hero on, on number one. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm playing someone with like a secondary unit, like a Lone Druid or whatever, I'll have the Druid on number two. Three is for Courier, number four, mm -hmm. number five is for the separate illusions. Makes sense. And that that's that's that makes it very fast to switch and stack. You just double click four, that's one illusion. Double click five, that's second illusion, and boom, that's three camps stacked. Mm. One more thing. If you have full mana with the rune, yeah, you should have farmed it first. You should have emptied everything into that camp, yeah, and then took a new rune and lost mm. nothing. Just sped up your farm. I agree. You're two levels ahead of her, you can absolutely deal some pressure. The thing about lower MMRs is that just like you don't realize when you have the upper hand on the mid laner, they 
you not realize that they are at are at a death risk from you as well. Uh -huh. So, if if you're able to recognize, you you can punish them for like quite some time until until they realize. Wait, no, I'm coming here and dying. I should have come here. You can get like you can get like three or four kills even. Oh, why did you use the haste train? Uh. A fight was going on top, I thought maybe I could get there. Yeah, that was a bit indecisive. The way you used it. Ideally, you would have teleported. Cleaned it up. Used haste midway to the fight. And used the rest of it to get back to the mid lane. So that's like two kills would have been achieved. And you would farm the mid lane as well. Other than that, it still worked out. And that's a pretty fast orchid. With some a little bit of efficiency, a little bit more kills on the wind ranger, you could have gotten an orchid at minute 10, I believe. Yeah, 10, maybe 11 at max. Still, so far, you're doing very well. Uh, how come you've lost this game? Uh, that's my question. <laughs> okay, so you're not entirely sure. What's your guess? Whoa, what was that? What the I, hell was I, that? I fucking tip it to the mid lane. Somehow, I don't know, I clicked the shrine. The fucking outpost. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, that, that's annoying, I, I guess. Zipping immediately to get to... Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of wasted mana. That's 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 a clarity waiting to be used. There we go. Stop hogging neutral items. Give it your supports. Yep. Should have. Now the thing is, you've had this orchid for two minutes now, and you know, the wind ranger is in the middle. How come you haven't attempted any kills on her? Uh, it's worried about you know. TP is coming in, I want to, you know, be sure before I jump someone. Well, let's use, uh, let's use what I said before. While you're traveling somewhere, you can always check someone's status. If you check on the Wind Rager, she has no strength items. She merely has 1.3k HP. So, from practice, you, you could guess, you could guesstimate that she will die in 5 seconds. Like the, in the initial jump, uh, the Vortex combo, and mm -hmm. then she would have like 300 HP left, and the Orchid's finisher would finish her off. Mm -hmm. So in this case, against squisher targets, which she absolutely is, you shouldn't have to worry about ATPs. Okay. Now, I'm, I, I'm not sure what does the shop show right now, but... When you have kill potential on the enemy mid laner, you should absolutely make sure you have vision on 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 them as well. Mm -hmm. So ideally, two minutes two minutes before that, you would have bought a ward or maybe asked your support to get you a ward, warded up the mid lane either here or here or here. That would give you a nice clean vision on the runes on her, and just farmed her. She okay. has she has no way to live through your jumps. Mm -hmm. That, that, that's the first thing you do when you get Orchid, you mentally calculate the best plan to get those Orchid kills. Okay. You can also farm the bottom because there's no more tower, this means whoever shows here will be in an unsafe area. That's kind of my plan to go bottom now. Yeah. And the least, the least good place is here because the tower is here, anyone can TP, rotate and... and and storm with an orc. He doesn't want to do team fights. He wants to do solo pickoffs. Yep. Let's rewind a bit. I was considering TPs, but again, I don't like fighting top, especially when they have towers. Well, as you're farming that small camp, you can absolutely keep your camera on top and analyze yes. the situation. 
something i have to get used to i am you know too obsessed with you know keeping camera on my hero i feel like something will happen if i am not looking at myself but <laughs> okay yeah that's a bad habit yeah, i need to i need to start doing i do this but i am better at it now but you know again uh, the habit that i am developing and i think part of the reason i don't you know gain mmr is this yeah it's usually focused. yeah usually small things that accumulate into big things Anyways, we can see here it's three versus three. This means it might be a pretty balanced fight, which means that whoever shows up first will swing the fight into their team's favor, which could absolutely be you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I think I could have killed all everyone. Yeah, that's a missed opportunity as well here. So. Looking back on what just happened, what information, even if you didn't come to the fight, did you gain? Uh, dual on cooldown and venality cooldown. 80% of the map's heroes are on top. Uh -huh. Which, if you decided not to come to the fight for whatever reason, leaves you free to create pressure somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That means either pushing down the bottom, pushing down the mid lane, but the last thing you want to do is to continue farming camps. Okay. And I can see you even got yourself a ward. You can plant this ward into the deeper jungle. I mean, you use this commotion which has happened at top to see rotations. Yeah, that's good enough. You will see anyone that, that's, that uh, goes to this camp. And after the fight is done, after two, three of your teammates die, now you come. Uh, I like going when people are alone, generally. Oof, my man. Oof. Yes, you gotta kill, but at what cost? Imagine if you teleported in yep. one minute earlier and got three kills and none of your teammates died. Yeah. I agree. That's one of the small things that might accumulate to you. MMR losses. So in this situation where I just got the skill and I have no mana, do you go to the jungle or do you go base? Yeah, that's what I was about to break down. Let's see. Uh, when a mancer is, I believe, position 4, yeah? Yep. So you just traded 60% of your mana into maybe barely killing a position 4 and what you gave instead is the information to the enemy team that the storm does not have a teleport does not have mana does not have kill potential and the enemy is absolutely free to take down either this tower or the mid lane tower because the rest of your team is very weak for losing the team fight one minute earlier. Mm -hmm. That is the consequence of you not showing to the fight and then wasting your entire mana pool on a position 4. Okay. I'm starting to see my mistakes. And those things you must think about consciously either if not during the game then if you would watch your own replays okay like ask yourself what did you gain from this either kill or an attempted kill and what the enemy gained i also hope you're sending yourself clarities uh yes okay, i keep cool. sending them until i have bloodstone that's good now again that's a haste used for nothing Stuff happening in the mid lane, which you're not responding to. Uh, should I have to TP immediately? Well, you have haste. You have two options. You can teleport or run back. Mm -hmm. I would say teleport is the better option. Oh yeah, that's absolutely a teleport. 
Look at that. Perfect setup for two kills. Venomancer will be dead, and she has just been run. Uh -huh. You show up, you clean up. That's that's free MMR for you. It makes sense. In the end, BA is doing your job because for Nacho Mugab, she she feels the need to like defend, participate in kills when it should be the opposite. It should be you creating space for her so she can sit in the jungle until her first big item. Okay. Your inactivity is actively Fast forcing your team to misplay. So far, you've had Orchid for five minutes and you only attempted to kill on position 4. Yeah. Well, and LC, but she was low, so it doesn't count. And then, being the most dangerous hero on the map, he just rotates rotate to camps. So while I praised you for your early game, mm -hmm. with a few minimal mistakes, so far your mid-game has been... Very weak. ...complete... Uh, how do I say... Mm, and decision what to do in decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where your losses happen the most, the mid game. Mm, in my experience, I think it is the mid game that causes me to lose games, but. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Right now, I mean, personally speaking, I don't do, you know, based on my own assumption that was before, you know, this coaching session is I was, I'm doing fine in the mid game and I'm messing up in the late game. But it feels like if I played good enough in the mid game, late game would be much simpler because I feel oh, yeah. like most of my games, I run out of, you know, options in terms of, I need too many items to contest them and then, I die once or maybe twice and the game is over. Well, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, now let's let's break down this fight. Mm -hmm. You correctly used the rune to get to the, to the full mana, but you get a little bit impatient and join the fight too early, resulting uh, in you losing half of your mana anyway. And again, y your first idea is to jump a dying position 4 breaking your region on a hero that is useless anyway because he just wasted his ultimate he's not gonna do much in the fights anymore even if he is alive but he, he will not even be alive mm -hmm. okay. and you also overzip but that, that happens that's not that's not the main breakdown point for this breakdown uh, wasting region is probably the main point here yes Wasting region and choosing the wrong target to champ to. Ideally, ideally you would champ on the mid ranger with the orchid as soon as the region finishes getting you to full. Mm -hmm. Venna doesn't have a stun. Uh, Apparition doesn't have a secured stun. He does have a ticking stun, but you will get out. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you have champ to wind ranger. The other two would have to champ you to retreat, but you would have enough time because of the level advantage, because of the orchid, because she will be silenced. You would have enough of a time to kill her and get out. Okay. While in reality, you just killed position four, then you're trying your hardest to kill a position five, and it's all the wrong order. Mm -hmm. And the main target, the most important one, runs away. So this fight, even with the kills achieved, gave you nothing. The tower, the tower still stands. You cannot pressure it. You have to go to the base. See what I'm saying? When you're playing, it might, it might look cool. Like, oh hey, I've joined this fight. We, we got two kills. We totally yeah. did good, yeah? But then you look back at the replay, you break it down and... Well, damn. This was the wrong move. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it should happen. So I'm not gonna comment on this thing. I was gonna, I was gonna say for the past seven minutes you have been to the top, to the middle, to the bottom, and you might notice that neither of those visits have resulted in any significant map space. Yep. Nothing gained. Yeah, the bottom tower was dead already by the time I, you know, finished my leaning stage, and then. Not much has been achieved. Yeah. Ideally, the, the t rest of the team, except for the carry, should rally behind you. So, if if you can, you should always like ask, "Hey guys, I am really strong right now. Come to me to the mid lane. We'll take this tower." Mm -hmm. If if they're not doing that, then you go to them. If they're top, you go top. You help them push. Mm -hmm. okay. But ideally, whatever you should go, you should make positive impact. You shouldn't, okay. you shouldn't wander around the map clueless what to do. Mm -hmm. You should always have a plan. Okay. Ouch. This will be the main contributor to your loss, I believe, the mid game. Oh, as soon as you got Orchid, you were able to make so much space, take down so many uh, good targets, not position 4s or 5s, and take then knock down the two of the remaining outer towers. But in the end, nothing was achieved. Okay. That was really nice. That was the first correct play in the mid game you have noticed. An nice. isolated target, you have walked a bit to conserve your mana, and then you did a big enough jump to kill her during the Orchid and Vortex combo. The technical execution for this move was 10 out of 10. Very, very good. I got nothing to say. If I look at my recent games. I can see most of my kills are like this now, instead of, you know. Yeah, that's for a Storm player, the execution of this champ was top notch. What happens afterwards is where we return to the usual stuff that you are clueless about your map movements. Mm -hmm. I'm sure pushing hard. Yeah, you gotta kill on the Wind Ranger. So again, uh, you can see everyone congregating in the mid lane. Your first okay. idea is to either push bottom to force a response bottom, which in turn would, would let your team take the, take the mid tower, or you join them in the mid lane, which just purely through four versus five would also result in them losing the mid tower. But instead okay. you just you, you take a stroll to the, to, the, to the shop for some reason. I mean, it's good that you're walking and saving mana. That's for a storm. That's that's a really good play. The bad part is that you don't know where to walk. If you take I think this, all these mistakes, basically, the main major thing that you pointed out is, you know, right now I'm I'm hovering over here. That it's Veno will step forward and I will jump. But now I know this Veno doesn't really matter. Yeah, what I was gonna say is that if you. I mean, whenever you're walking, you can also take a second to think about their composition and uh, and what can kill you, because it it changes from time to time. Ch just by the draft, you know that uh, if Wind Ranger gets in the shackle, you will most likely die. If uh, LC gets in a duel, you will most likely die. And as the match goes on, uh, the number of like factors that can kill you increases. Like Shadow Friend, he might get used. In which case you will also die. But for now, you know that only Wind Ranger and only LC is threatening kills on you. You've just killed Wind Ranger. You know she's not gonna be here anytime soon, and you can see LC top on the minimap. Yeah. So just through this information, you know that you can play a bit more aggressive and just show, not necessarily champ at someone, but just be in the mid lane and threaten threaten the kill just by your 
mere presence, make them afraid yeah. to come to the mid lane. Mm -hmm. You're still the most farmed guy on the map, even with all, all those mistakes. Yeah. Flex your net worth at them. Okay. Wait, where did the tower go? Did I miss the tower kill? How long uh, was he talking about the tower while well, while it was gone? Uh, uh, I don't really know. Oh, around here, okay. Yeah. While you were taking the shop stroll. Well, okay. What I said still, still holds. Uh, still, still holds true. Yeah. But now that you know the tower is gone, why are we in the mid lane? Yeah, they decided to smoke, so I'm like, yeah, let's go with these guys. Okay, so this next thing is not going to be aimed at you, it will be just more like a general talking mm -hmm. point. Uh, if someone smokes, they should look for opportunities. Mm -hmm. like, like right now, when you started the smoke, all you knew is that the mid lane tower is gone and that there's a solo and a mancer defending mm -hmm. it. On paper, this smoke was shit. But mm -hmm. in reality, I can see that you champing the Venomancer, well, not you, the, the, the team champing the Venomancer has, has caused a reaction and now there's a fight brewing, so let's see how this fight goes. Yeah, just as I thought, they saw Venomancer getting killed and they all ran away. Ran, ran away. So, your team has used the smoke. And what did your team get from it? Again, position 4 dies. That's yeah. not important. The enemy knows your location. And the shadow friend is pushing bottom. Yep. So from this play, which your team thought was the right one, like smoke get a kill, sounds good on paper. In the reality, oh. it was again the wrong move. Yeah. Tower is dead. This smoke achieved nothing. I agree. If Shadow Friend didn't have Shadow Blade, I would have said you could have totally went and defended the tower. Did you know he had Shadow Blade? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's take a moment to break down the status of the map again. Uh, yeah, you still know what can kill you. That's Mind Ranger and DLC. You saw Mind Ranger in the middle. What you should be doing at this point is to try and get more information of where everyone is. Mm -hmm. The obvious answer to how to get information is to plant some words. Do you know? And do you know what's the other? What are the other methods? Push a lane. Yes. If you send someone to a lane, someone from the enemy, the enemy team will eventually have to show up and defend. So if you would like uh, to ask your dragon knight, who is pretty tanky, with a punch, to try to go take the top tower, mm -hmm. someone will have to show up. And, and that someone will give information, either that someone is LC, and then you will just have to find out where the Wind Ranger is. Mm -hmm. And eventually they will both show up on separate lanes, or maybe they will both show up in the same lane. And what happens is that then you get an information that you can either jump one of them separately, or just go to a completely different lane and jump anyone else, because they don't have kill potential on you. Makes sense. So again, it's mid-game, and what you're doing with an orchid, you're hitting camps. All of the camps. 
I'm close to my bloodstone, so I'm like, let's farm it and then make a move. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. You can still see glimpses of the enemies on the minimap. Like the, the LC there. And you can plan your movements around those little bursts of information. Like you just saw LC in the mid lane, now you see Windrage in the mid lane. Use this information to play aggressively like you do right now. This was uh, bad luck, then good luck, then bad luck, then good luck. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure I should break it down. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you know what happened there and what could have been better. Yep. Let's move on. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is the tower is gone. If you would take this moment yourself, if you were watching this replay alone, what would you say your next move should be? Mm. Uh, exactly right now, somebody okay. needs to take care of the mid tower and then we can probably go bottom. Somebody will show up bottom and then I can kill him. At least that's what was going on in my head. Like if somebody clears the mid wave, I'll go bottom. Otherwise I clear mid and walk bottom. Makes sense. Let's see what happens. There we go. Information. LC is bottom, wind Richard in the middle. Those yep. are two heroes that, that threaten a kill on you. That was very good. You have identified that the Wind Ranger cannot kill you. LC is here. You go, you grab a kill. These plays should be the majority of your mid game. Okay. But over these 15 minutes, you have only killed the Wind Ranger on the bottom once and then walked nowhere. And now, so. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest factor of your losses the indecision during mid game. Mm -hmm. If you make conscious movements more often, this would, would give you better farm and this would give your team more space. Mm -hmm. This would win your games. Okay. Uh, but my question at this point would be, you know, given the information that you have given me or the, the coaching suggestions, uh, I'm pretty sure the next few games I'm going to overdo it. Like I'm not going to hit any creep and just going to roam around, look for information and kills. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there is a certain balance. Mm -hmm. I cannot say anything else without seeing those games. Okay. But in general, if I am, you know, in the mid game, I have kill potential, I should be looking to kill cores. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, what the hell happened here? I think I fucked up. I could take that fight much, much better. I don't know, I should not be so afraid. Diving, position 5 under tower. That in on itself isn't bad. You know LC is dead. But you don't know where the Wind Ranger is, so that alone should deter you from making a move. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, it's an easy kill, that's a Bloodstone charge, that's enough mana to get out. But uh, if you think about risk versus reward, that's a Yeah, if I get shackled, Yes, okay. that's training a position 5 to feed the mid laner and die yourself. Luckily, she was very slow to react, but in higher MMR games, she would totally be dead. Okay.
but still what you did was force everyone to rotate to the bottom mm -hmm. which again is information yep. you know that everyone's gonna converge here now you can freely take aggressive farm down the top lane or the mid lane what should you yeah, take top that's good Oh, okay. <laughs> Enemy mid laner is dead. Your team takes Roche. That's a good move. I think we kind of fucked up here. Yeah, I get spotted. As soon as you saw Shadow Friend pass that sentry, you mm -hmm. should know that if you jump, you will maintain the vision on him this entire time. He is dead. I think I took a couple of more seconds. Should have done it yeah. much earlier. These snap decisions, like seeing the stars align, should mm -hmm. should also be the majority of Storm's gameplay. Mm -hmm. Being able to recognize opportunities to jump. And yeah, because he missed a few seconds, he escaped. Yep. If you die there and there, the Roche would be yours. Yep. Easily. I think when I watched my own replay, I think this was probably one of my mistakes. Uh, you'll see it soon enough. Yeah, okay. Maybe it wasn't, but that's what I thought. Like, my major takeaway. I'll let you know when it happens. Okay. Invisibility. Again, hogging items, <laughs> which supports can you use? Yeah. What was that? What do you mean? You hit someone and just, and then just run away. I was expecting my team to walk up. I was walking from the right. I was asking them to walk up from the other side. They didn't. Then I felt like I'll probably die here alone. Yeah, that makes sense. What didn't make sense is you, you, you slapped someone before jumping out. Yeah. I think it took me a moment to realize. I think this was my mistake. Well, what I thought was my mistake at least. I should think I should have been around Roche, but I decided to come over here. Yeah, that's that's a good point you make. You know that Roche was being contested, you know that Roche yes. has lower HP than usual, you know that's a hot zone. And I wanted my team teams. to I wanted my team to back off, smoke and look for a pickoff because they're all up and then go Roche. But since they didn't listen, I should have still stayed here and I think this was my mistake. I mean, I mean, it depends. If if you cannot do anything to win that team fight, then staying away probably is the best option. But I think in this case, uh, with with the orchid, you might have been able to turn anything around. Yep. I will assume from that moment everything went to shit. Mm, we'll see. I don't exactly remember, but you know. So far, that's good what you're doing. You can, you know they're ahead. You know you cannot fight them, so you just force teleports. Yep, at least try to. Of course they don't care, because they have AHs, they can take the mid tower. And this is where you head back. This is where you should head back. You will not be able... and is dead. They have ages. Don't feel yeah. like you don't have enough manpower to take this tower yourself, so as soon as you take down the previous tower, you should head back, do some 
zip vice try to deter them from finishing the racks. Is my atomization fine? Yeah, I don't have anything to comment. You okay. have you have you have seen you have identified the two spells that kill you, that's shackle, that's uh, dual. And you know that Lincoln's protects you from that. So you go for Lincoln's. Yep. Optimization is 100% on point. Mm -hmm. BKB would be useless here. Sloppy jumping. In the end, you got a kill, so that's okay. What's sloppy about that? The first hit is fine. The first jump is fine. Mm -hmm. Vortex combo is fine. And then for no reason, you jump here. Okay, I should just keep jumping on top of myself. Either that, or in the direction LC would run, which is of course her fountain direction, so that she will either have to run past the remnant, or run back to your team. Okay. But sideways, that's not ideal. Mm -hmm. Would have saved some mana and got a kill early, earlier. Other than that, still pretty good. That's pretty good. So... I was thinking of this blind jump. I really was. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing that can kill, kill you with the Lincolns, so you can champ whoever, you can champ this guy. But as we said before, position 4 isn't really worth it. You can champ this guy and force his PKB. Yeah. <coughs> you are once again still the strongest hero on the map, and you should totally abuse the strength, even if you can't get a kill. If you can force the reaction out of enemies, you should do it. Now, this is, I think, where maybe I messed up, but, you know, I wanted my team to, you know, wait for me to join them before they pushed the tower because mid needed attention, but uh, they didn't. And this is where the game went south. Yeah, uh, for the solo pickups, you don't exactly need your team. You don't need a team to force a BKB out of Wind Ranger. Yeah, but this fight. This fight, yeah, I should have been there. Yeah, but there was a huge wave mid and we have nothing mid. I wanted them to wait for me before they commit to the tower. Just, you know, wait, wait it out and I cleared two, ca two waves and then I was planning to walk back. And join them. Yeah, your initial statement is true. The wave was pushing, so someone should have defended. But because no one did, your top priority is still not the wave. The wave will still hit those two towers. They will they they will be slowed down. The ancient is not being threatened. Your priority is to be there for your team. Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, I think if you were there, you would have that as well. Probably, yeah. But the correct play it's still would to be there. still have been to just stand by, observe, champ in, champ out. Mm -hmm. Don't even need to fully commit, you can just uh, help get a kill and then zip out. But yeah. just, just being there is enough. 
Okay. But uh, my question to you is, if this was, you know, let's say a 6K game or a 7K game, how would this play out? Would they back off or would they not listen? Still not listen? I think they would recognize that their team is currently weaker mm -hmm. and, and the mid needs pushing. So they wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. Like looking at the, at the team fight capabilities, enemy team has a dual. They have Shadow Friends Ultimate from Shadow Blade. The Radiant team absolutely has the upper hand in five versus five, and your team is pretty good at split pushing. Or just retaliating. Just waiting for somebody to show up. At this point, I think LC is a bit too fat for you. Yeah, I'm just pinging, asking somebody to come and help me kill him. She was alone. The thing is, your position is really far for anyone to comfortably not only come and join the team fight, but also uh, head back in case they need to respond somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Was this item a mistake or this is still fine? Or would you go at a I'm leaning at towards a mistake. Okay, yeah, I thought so too. Maybe a Shivas? If, if they consistently champed on you two or three people and Shadow Friend would get his ult off, yes, this would work. But from what you have seen in this game so far, you, you never really got champed. And if you do yeah. get champed, you have Lincolns. So th sense. this kind of does nothing for you. Okay. She was... Well, it's a good item. I, I don't often buy it myself, because when you think about it, the, the other two options, Hex and Bloodthorn, they do much more than give a slow aura. Mm -hmm. I would have gotten Hex, probably. She, okay. Take down LC or Wind Ranger or, or Shadow Friend. Exactly. Stop them from doing the dealing damage. Okay. So, uh, at the current state of the game, what do you think is the play? Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, you've lost a few team fights. You cannot do five versus five. Split pushing is your only option, it seems. You're still very good at split pushing. You have Lincolns. It's very hard to catch you. And the rest of your team should should play behind you, honestly. If you get a kill, if you get two kills, that's enough to force three versus five scenarios where your team will win those team fights. But if you if you go five versus five, your team is bound to lose. I mean, for you personally, there is there is not much to do at this stage of the game. The biggest mistakes were made in the mid game, where you failed to accumulate an advantage. And right now, their draft is simply better than your draft. Mm -hmm. And they had enough space to... Well... To, to fully uh, execute their draft. Oh. Yeah, I think there's nothing else to be taken from this match. Do you have any more questions? Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, the only other question is, should I just, you know... To get better at Storm and in general, you know, uh, decision making in the mid game as a mid laner, or what's your best advice? Just keep playing. Did you say skip lane? Just keep playing. Oh, yeah, of course. Keeping keeping playing is always the, the best option because you, you're getting practice, you're getting feelings for the champs. Mm -hmm. uh, and outside of games, I, I would say. 
uh, if if you if you're looking at your own replays, just always think about what your next move should be, where in, where in the map you wanna be, and what kind of kills would change the game status. <laughs> like, do you wanna kill this position four, or do you wanna wait a bit and wait for the position two or one to show? Makes sense. At this point, I cannot kill anyone without. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question. Uh, I've seen your replays as well, and you know, I also watch some other high MMR players. Uh, you generally, you know, rush a bottle. Uh, I was not rushing a bottle. Then I also tried some game with rushing a bottle, but I don't really. I think the reason in my head is, you know, just rush a bottle and get your orchid fast and ignore the smaller items. Is that the main reasoning behind this? Well, yes. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly sipping small items. I'm still getting the boots and the null talisman. Same for you. Yeah, but I've seen people, you know, you know they get maybe a null or maybe sometimes two null, then they go treads. And then they go into orchid sometimes. Yeah, it depends on the. Mostly depends on the opposing ma uh, opposing matchup. If if I'm not punished from rushing battle, or if you're able to play greedy, or if you don't plan to trade much with the enemy mid laner, then rushing battle will usually uh, pay off for itself. But it's not something I recommend to everyone because, again, you need to have a lot of experience to pull it off. Okay. So that's that's something I will do in every single of my games because I, I will always have a backup plan if I get to harass too much or if I want yeah, to... Yeah, what I do is I, I queue a bottle and a salve. If I get down, I send out a salve. If no, I wait out the board. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's a safe play. Yeah, and generally speaking, your comments on my gameplay are like, mechanically I am okay, but uh, decision making, especially in the mid game, needs a lot more work. Yeah, to summarize, your s as a Storm player, mm -hmm. you are very good. Mm -hmm. as, as a player, not so much. Okay. So, decision making needs a lot more work. Yeah, it's, it's the... The non mechanical stuff. Okay, alright. I'll uh, keep thinking about it in the next games and then maybe we can talk sometime later. Alright, ending this session now. Good luck. Thank you. Bye bye.